welcome this is mel skinner and we're back with some more war game airland battle and it's beginning of day number one so it's time to set up our turn here on the campaign map and let's go ahead and check our units here so i would like a minimum of four morale before we start sending out our units but we really do need to start moving them here so i'm gonna go ahead and move this brigade up we're also going to do the same over hmm, we can move into Oslo which might be a good idea as we don't have anything covering that right now although I don't think the enemy can navally land on me because it's the wrong coast for them so let's go ahead and just move up this way because this this space here will be covered by this zone so we'll move up to here this unit will move into Stockholm it'd be very important that we keep a hold of that Okay, Kalmar here isn't really worth any victory points, so there's no real need to keep a hold of that. Neither is this space here. So I'm going to start getting them moving as well. Now Malmo is pretty important, so I'm going to keep this division here until we have more backup. So for right now, I'm just going to have these guys R&R &R up. Okay... You guys still don't have very good initiative, so I'm going to work on that with you. Might as well just R&R. &R. Okay, we definitely need to R&R &R with this group. I'm going to do the same with this division as well. As much as I'm going to need to move somebody into Copenhagen, I think I'm going to end up setting out that one division, that Danish division, which is going to spawn in Copenhagen, which is going to be uh, just 10 points. So that's a pretty cheap unit, and it will at least cover it uh, for uh, naval invasion purposes. And if I need to, I can reinforce. Now, I don't know if deployments can happen from this sector. I think they can. So it's still good to defend Kiel here. All right, let's, let's check over here. So I have a couple different options with my defense over here. Now, this isn't worth any victory points, but they still could attack into it. I could keep these guys here, and I could commander raid these guys again, which would keep them in place yet again, holding them off. I feel like I have to R&R &R these guys because they're just not ready to defend. Now, this is worth a victory point. It'd be nice to defend. Right now, the enemy cannot take it. So we could hold them for another turn. Well, as I said, I'm definitely going to R&R &R these guys. So that has been decided. Let's take a look at what we can do here because the commander raid would cost me 10. And as much as that would be very good here, it'd hold these guys off, preventing them from moving yet again. And it'd prevent them from taking this province which is the only way they'd be able to go into this one unless they come out here too. Now, we do have a unit coming up to defend against this advance. Although, uh, if the enemy keeps pushing here, they may get to a point where they are going to threaten Oslo because I just don't have units up here yet. I would like to deploy units, so if we use a commander raid, we won't be able to deploy any of these units here because we won't have enough. Uh, I could deploy this guy. It's only 10. Next turn, we get... 23, I think pretty much guaranteed because I don't think there's any way for the enemy to capture more victory points or more political power this turn. Unless they captured here, which we do have a guy uh, sitting there defending. So unless they capture this spot, there's no way for them to get more more political power or take political power from us. By the way, if a if a territory is contested, you have a battle ongoing. No one gets the victory, the political power from that space. So that's an important consideration. I could do air recon here and try and figure out what's here. And I could hit them with an air raid. Which would lower their initiative uh, on two units, which would make them uh, very reduced in effectiveness. Especially as if more units come into this space over the day, that would really be an effective uh, use there. But that costs us five. So just doing the math, we know we're going to get 23 more than likely. We might get 22 if there's a battle here. So that puts us at 45. So if we do nothing, we'll be able to get the Marines here. If we use a, a 10 points at the most, we'll be able to use either of these two uh, 
group. So we have the Commando Brigade and we have the Airborne Brigade from uh, the French Airborne Brigade. So either of those would be deployable and we might be able to start deploying them in Oslo, which would be very nice. If I don't spend any points, I also get the opportunity to use the 82nd Airborne or the 1st Infantry Brigade. So we have a lot of options open to me if I don't use points. But I think I would rather deploy units than not. Now, this is going to be way back in the back here in Copenhagen, but at least it will defend it. So uh, this is a low morale unit. So if they get attacked, I don't know how well I'd be able to keep the enemy off of me. We're going to want to put them in reserve anyway for a while because, I mean, this is well on the back line. Hmm. All right, well, I th I'm definitely going to deploy these guys just because we don't have a defense on Copenhagen unless I do. And they pop up instantly. So it looks like we can even R&R &R them to get them rested. That's not normal. Usually when you deploy, there's a turn that it takes for them to show up. In this case, that was instant. So uh, that seems to be a little bit of a unique deployment that we had going on there. What is this uh, group like? I didn't really take too much of a look at it. So it looks like they're men in trucks. Quite a bit of an inf emphasis on infantry because 142 of the 291 is infantry. So that's that's pretty... Uh, well, let's see. What are you, okay, so trucks for the most part. Okay, so this is going to be your anti-tank unit, it looks like. Looks like there's a couple of those, actually. Okay. And what do we have here? We've got tanks. Okay, this is a new tank. I Not a very good tank. Oh, it's only 15 points, but... Okay. Interesting. Is this a mixed Danish-German unit? Hmm. Okay. Pretty good air cover, though. We've seen this from the Danish units. They seem to have pretty good air cover. Maybe not the best uh, fighters, air-to-air uh, -air combat capability, but pretty good otherwise. So, that's uh, a pretty good unit. Again, I could command a raid here, but then we wouldn't be able to deploy any troops next turn, so I really have to save the points. If I were to use an air raid, we could hit these guys and hurt them for two initiative. Let's just go ahead and take a, an air recon here. We've got six of them. Let's see, let's see what these guys look like. So, we have pretty full initiative. This guy's got really good morale, so it's going to be a danger to me, and it looks like it is... A tank division too. Let's see if we can take a look at this guy to see what we've got. So a number of T-72 tanks, that's going to be a real problem for me, I think, with these uh, Norwegian units. I don't know how well they're going to be able to hang handle these T-72s. As you can see, very expensive though. 100 a piece with these ones and 120 a piece here. But a lot of tanks. And their infantry is probably going to be fairly heavy, I would imagine. Huh. Eh. Okay, yeah. They've got BMPs, which have anti-tank missiles. Okay. So that's going to be a tough opponent for us. If we have to fight them. Morale very high. Again, I could hit them with an air raid here, and that would lower their morale. But I think we're going to hold off on that. We're just going to try and see if the uh, Norwegians can hold their ground. Now, an another option I could go for here is I could just move so that we're not a target. Now, we would just freely give up this unit or this uh, space, giving them political power. But maybe put myself into a delaying good position. Hmm. The advantage of using the commander rate is I could R&R &R these guys again and get a little bit higher morale. I'd be up at 6 and, and 5, which, uh, looking at what we've got here, this is a 4 morale. That's pretty good. And we'd also lower their initiative still more, so that could be effective. I just, I would like to get the reinforcements here. So, I think we should probably look for that. Alright. A lot of decision making there. 
I think we're just going to go ahead. Uh, again, if I, I could get away with an air raid and have 30 points to be able to use, and I am really tempted to use it because that would lower these guys down to two initiative apiece. Any battles that get involved would drop them another one. And as long as I could hold out, we, we could beat them just through the initiative battle because I would have a, a, an advantage there and I might just be able to draw, draw, draw and eventually just ex exhaust their units and we might be able to take them out that way. I'm going to go ahead with that. I'm going to go ahead and do an air raid. Try and blunt this offensive. See if we can uh, slow it down a little bit. And we'll have enough points, if I'm lucky, to be able to pull off uh, at least one deployment. So that's what we're going to do. And let's send our orders. These guys will still be able to move around. Ah, okay, we have a naval invasion here. These guys have pretty good morale. We are going to have to get into this fight, so we're just going to try and hold. Now, if I am... This is happening in Stockholm, so we really do not want them to be able to take this. So we're going to have to hold until we can get more men in here. If we can get a victory, that's great, but we have to get 2,000 victory points, which is going to be tough. I think I have another unit moving up in here, though, too. So, unfortunately, that means that we're not going to have the one unit move up as I had intended. Now, look at these deployment zones. As a matter of fact, this guy doesn't have a deployment zone. Uh, if you see the arrows, he doesn't have one. That's because he did a naval invasion without actually controlling any territory. So what we can do here is we can squeeze him and force casualties into this guy. And while he is in this position, he cannot get any reinforcement so whatever he deploys that's it that's all he has so we have to fight here hard to make sure that he does not get a deployment zone so uh that is exactly what we're going to try and do here so i'm going to get out my logistics vehicles we're going to go with the cheaper ones so we can get a, a decent force out here to try and hold the enemy i'm going to go ahead and put this out in the corner so it's going to be a little bit tougher for my enemy to kill it and this is going to be where uh, the fighting happens. It's going to be over here and uh, this zone here. I'm not going to do a lot of advance uh, moves here. It's just going to be a holding action because I think that's going to be what we can do to most effectively try and combat these guys. I'm going to put my forward operating base up as pretty much as close as I possibly can to the front. Um, because we are going to have some pretty heavy fighting here, and I want to be able to rearm. We're going to go... I don't know what my force looks like yet. Okay, we do have tanks, but they are not particularly well armored. AP power isn't necessarily great. They're cheap, and we have an okay number of them. So we might use some in our defense see what our infantry looks like. So this is Swedish, so that we have a different nation we're looking at here. So we've got guys with submachine guns, and they have a... looks like anti-air launcher. So that's going to be our defenses there. We have... I'm going to... I'm not really sure what this unit is. I mean, they're using... Is that bolt-action rifles? Hmm, okay. It might be... Not a lot of these, so I'm going to assume that's not standard infantry. That might be, like, a reservist. Okay, this is going to be what looks like our anti-tank unit, because pretty good uh, anti-tank weapons there. Uh, okay, no, this is our anti-tank unit. You notice the range there. Range on the ground is more than 2,000 meters, so that's going to be pretty effective. We're probably going to want to get some of those. I don't know what our enemy composition is going to be like, but if they have a strong tanks, we're going to want to use uh, these units. We don't have a ton of it, though. Okay, this looks like our standard infantry. And then this is uh, like a special forces kind of unit here, which we may or may not want to use. Uh, pretty expensive. As a matter of fact, our infantry is fairly expensive. It seems like this is the, the style of this particular unit. It looks like it's a more well-equipped unit here. But as a result, they're more expensive. Okay. Well, let's take a look at what we've got support-wise. Um, okay. I guess this is supposed to be anti-air. Okay. Moving along. We've got some vehicles here. So, this looks like it has about the same gun. It's not going to have the armor, but about the same gun that we have on our tanks. 
We have a recordless rifle, which has decent range. Okay, anti-tank ability. And then we've got the tow missiles, which are going to have really good range. I'm probably going to want some of those. I might stick them in the forest over here to try and do uh, defense. Now, the enemy can come through this forest or they can come along the road. All right, well, let's, let's focus on the infantry because the infantry is going to be the brunt of our defense. What is the vehicle they have with them? Okay, so it is an APC. All right, let's put in our infantry. Now, I'm going to expect the enemy to be right up in my face. So I'm going to have to be prepared for that. Okay, what do we have for recon? We don't have any infantry that are recon. And for helicopters. What is our air like? So we have some Drakens, which look like they are totally anti-air. And then we have the Vigans, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Which, like, they have ground attack missiles. All HE, though, so it's not going to be effective against armor. But we do have... I was looking at the Falcons, but the RB-75s appear like they have very good anti-tank ability. So we've got some anti-tank and uh, HE missiles here. Okay. That could be pretty effective. And again, we're right next to our deployment zone. They don't have a deployment zone, so they can't call in here. They have no air support. So we're going to be able, if we able are able to knock out their anti-air, uh, their anti -air, we are going to be able to massacre these guys with our air power. So... Uh, that's good. Now, these guys aren't going to be as valuable to us because it's all uh, anti-air, but we can do strafing runs with our cannons, so it's not a uh, completely useless unit. Okay, let's get back onto the infantry. Okay, we've got some more buildings here. This isn't a bad anti-tank weapon. And these guys are cheap enough. And I am tempted to put them in the reserve here in this in this last building. Because they can still use their anti-tank weapons to help us out. And they do have machine guns, so they will be able to support us to a certain extent. Alternatively, I put the anti-air in the building here. Granted, uh, probably one of these buildings would be better for our anti-air. Although that would put them right next to the forward operating base, so we know we would get the supply. Might be a good call, and I might want to put my anti-tank either in the forest or in this building here. I put it pretty close to where the enemy is, but and leave them maybe vulnerable. But it would put me close enough to the forward operating base that I think I'd get supply. So, all right, well we'll go ahead. Uh, we do have enough of these guys that I feel like. Oh wait, they don't have air power. What am I thinking? Or they're not going to have air power. All right, so we'll go ahead with these uh, reserve guys. Either that or we'll go with the anti-tank and put them in the rear. I'll see what my points are like first. Let's do other infantry um, where we feel we'll need them. Maybe we put anti-tank in this building back here. Okay. So I'll put infantry here. I'm going to get have to be quick on the draw for... the unloading of vehicles, but it, it's only a, a single keybind, so we should be able to... Oops. Let's, uh, let's get a full platoon here. I'll put them in the back so they can uh, take advantage of the the range that they have, and we'll do the same thing these guys. So we've got our anti-tank up in those buildings. So, infantry... I'm going to put... Some infantry here. And... I'm tempted to put anti-tank here. But I think I'm just going to go with normal infantry. Okay. We have a lot of points to work with here. Now, I should try and contain them so they can't go other places. So I'm going to have to put defenses other otherwise. This is just a setup because I, I, I really know that the fighting is going to happen a lot here. And this is where our air power is going to come from. And what have you. This would be enough to hold them uh, until we get more reinforcements. I'm not going to worry about tanks mu as much. I, I think I should go with maybe some vehicles with some anti-tank weapons. 
I don't know if this would have enough range. This definitely would. We could put it back in the woods here and it'd be able to rain missiles in here if they try and do an armor advance. Pretty expensive, though. Now, the point is, though, they have to move pretty far to get these other points from me, so... I don't think I have to defend them as hard. I'm still going to try, of course, uh, to defend them fairly well. So uh, we're going to put infantry in here along the road. And we're going to put another group of infantry, maybe even anti-tank infantry. All right, what I'll see is I'll put one group there, put the anti-tank in there. Okay, that's going to be it for the defenses here. I might put another group there, depending on what I can afford. And then we'll just go with the buildings in here. This will be uh, very, fairly easy, I think, to defend. So we're going to grab another platoon, put it in that building. And maybe this building will be our, our anti-tank weapons that we'll be able to fire upon this bridge here. So we've got one more platoon that we can grab. Put that there. And we'll use some of these reserver, uh, reserve guys here to help uh, defend this area against our enemy. So put you right there. And we've got one more spot that we can put guys there. Um, do another one of these guys right there. And then over here, I'd like a little bit more infantry support. So we're going to go ahead and grab... some reserve units that are going to go over in this wood here. Okay, so we have 30 points in reserve. Uh, pretty heavy, strong force over here. I'm going to be reinforcing heavily in this area. I'm going to get a lot of air power going as soon as we can afford it. And we're just going to start bombing the living crap out of these guys once I feel like I've depleted their air, their anti-air. So it's going to take a little bit of time. That's why we haven't done it yet. Okay, let's go ahead and launch here. So I'm going to just go ahead and drag and unload. Drag and unload. This way they can't catch me in my vehicles. Okay, unload. Okay. Let us start moving the trucks in a spot where they're not going to get killed. Okay. Um, any more trucks? These guys get out of there. Let's get this vehicle in here as well as this vehicle here, this vehicle here. Uh, get them in the forest where they'll be a little bit more protected. They can't be protected by the buildings, so uh, that's what we're going to have to work with. We're going to go ahead and bring these vehicles. So it'll be a little bit vulnerable uh, at first as they move. Okay. I think we moved everybody around. Okay, we see the anti-air, so if we can attack it with our air power... Let's, uh, let's see about that. Um, so we're going to want these, these guys here. And we're going to go right after their anti-air. And while we have that incoming, I'm going to have you guys back off. You come over there. All right, I'm going to have to pay attention to these. Back. Back. So the missiles can't hit me. Right, I don't know if I got any of them, uh, but we lost vision, so we don't know where any more of their anti-air is. Uh, when we see the anti-air... Oh, here we go. We see something there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and have my infantry start moving over this way. You know what? No, I'm not. I don't want to... I don't actually want to draw a fight here. Oh, you know what? Let's grab one of these and just knock out the helicopters. Uh, their helicopters should have no defense. Come on. The helicopter is right there. Here we go. Hey, I don't know what that was about, but we're going to get out of there. So we don't lose that guy. Okay, we see where the anti-air is. A lot of shots at us. We didn't lose them, though. That's good. Okay, well, that was kind of scary. Uh, we might be able to hit this guy and get out. Okay. Not really sure. All right, why don't we just get some tanks here? 
We'll get them going. Get them over into this wood here. Actually, I don't know if I want them in the wood. Um, let's get them over here. Right, we've got the uh, infantry. Oh, we got to need to get the trucks out of there. We're going to lose some trucks here due to the rocket fire. Okay, let's start hitting these guys. They don't have any anti-air defense, so we should hit them hard. Let's get our air power going. This time we should have a little bit more clear. Okay, now we're going to really need to start buying air power. Because I see where their anti-air defense is. Okay, let's get this guy out of there so he stops getting shot at. Okay, you need to get out of there. Not exactly sure what happened there. Okay, you need to get out of there. Okay, our tanks are being fired upon. Let's just have them stop and fight. Okay, we are getting slapped around a little bit over in this zone. I'll do my best to try and fight it. Um, let's see if we can hit this guy in the woods. Because that is their main way of fighting me right now. Okay, let's get out of there. So we don't get hit by their anti-air again. Okay. I'm going to call some more tanks in. Because it's clear... They are using tanks on me. Okay, we've got... Uh, where is their anti-air? I saw it for sure. There it is. Okay, we're losing some infantry here. Let's see if we can hit this uh, helicopter. I don't know what's going on with my missiles. For some reason, they're just not being fired. All right, let's hit this guy. Okay, let's get these guys out of here. I'm not sure if they're firing off their missiles or not. But it is kind of infuriating. Okay, we're losing our infantry. Let's get some more infantry over here. Okay, let's fire on this guy. Again, I'm not really sure why we're not getting these missiles off. Maybe it's the... I'm... I'm Maybe I am getting the missiles off, and I'm just not seeing it. Okay, well, we've got more air that we can send out there. I'm trying to kill the anti-air here so that we don't have that keep firing at me. I'm trying to get this... There we go. That's what we want. Now, I know there's one more out there. There we go. Get rid of these helicopters. All right. I'll evacuate for now. I don't really have an attack angle just yet. Got a pretty good fire going on that helicopter. We are getting to the point where I'm actually maybe able to uh, advance here and maybe take these guys out. Okay, we've got a tank incoming. We may need the logistics here to help rearm our anti-tank guys here. Uh, they've only fi they fired off some of their missiles. These guys got kind of beat to hell and uh, reduced in strength, but we're able to put them together. Okay, let's bring our tanks up, which actually did fairly well. Okay, we do have our air power ready to go. Um, I am very tempted here to just start advancing here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some infantry. And we're going to grab them, and we're going to go ahead and just start moving into this urban area. These are our trucks. They're not armed. They're just logist logistics trucks like we've seen before. Okay, we're going to make a tank advance here. Uh, let's get both of our tank units up. I'm going to get a recon unit going. Um, this guy will do. And we'll put that up in here, this woods, so we can see what's going on over here. I'll also grab these guys, and we'll bring them up into this house. We haven't unloaded them yet. Okay. Go ahead and open up on these guys. Okay, let's unload, just so we are not threatened here. Go ahead and use our air power here to take these guys out.
Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and evac these guys as I come out. All right, we're fairly confident of knowing where their anti-air is now. All right, what I'd like to do is get these guys evacuing if I can. Kind of hard sometimes when you have a lot of units. Okay, we got some more missiles off before we order the evac. Okay, I don't like the recon unit where it is. Let's let's see if we can. Oh, well, we actually have their command vehicle in sight, and we just knocked it out. So if that's the only command vehicle they have, they don't have control of the zone anymore. Okay, T-55s, it looks like. Let's go ahead and hit these guys again. Okay, I'm going to focus on their, their tank destroyers here. Okay, let's get this guy out of there. Okay, you are there. Now we can start pushing you. Get you up into this zone. We found some more anti-air. We're going to hit that. Okay. Have you keep hitting. Uh, I'm going to get a logistics truck up to uh, help arm these guys. How are we doing on time? We have 11 minutes left. So we still have plenty of time. I could get a logistics vehicles here capturing more points. I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to get a command vehicle over here. And I'm also going to get over an infantry unit just to keep an eye on them. We're going to put that right in this urban area here. Okay. Got a vehicle coming in towards our... Okay, have these guys cross over to here. And we're just going to start scouring. Let's have you guys come over there. And have my tanks come over here. Okay. I know that there's anti-air air here. If I if I had... Oh, you know what? We could get... Uh, we don't have any artillery. I was about to say, we could get something. Oh, they do have uh, more... Okay, well, they do have... Another command vehicle. You know what? We could probably hit that. Let's hit that. Let's hit these guys. We know there's anti-air in the area, but we'd probably be able to fly by and do some pretty good damage. Okay. Looks like that last command vehicle is all we needed. And I leveled up. I think there's like some weird experience system that is in the game. I don't really know what it means. Uh, it probably is more for multiplayer. But there we go. We get that. And we get a total victory. I don't know if this will destroy the unit because I don't think they have anywhere to go. Uh, it, maybe their morale will be enough so that they just can stay in the fight. But they don't have a zone captured. Uh, so we'll have to see. But I'd inflicted pretty significant casualties on them with very few losses. We were able to just contain them and just pound them with our air power because we knew they had no ability to call an air of their own. So, very good. Let's see what happens here. They've been totally destroyed. So, that was an unwise decision by the AI, it appears. Let's go ahead and progress here because I realized that the autosave, it will go to the very next battle. So, the very next battle is going to be here, where we're going to... I'm not sure where the fight is, um, but it appears a naval assault versus a unit that we have that has seven morale. I'm going to guess it's another assault against... Oh, no, this is the... I always get confused here. This is just the end result. Never mind. Okay. So, I think the unit in Stockholm got delayed. Okay, we do have these two units coming in to attack me, but on the positive side, we'll note their initiative is quite low now. So they're going to have less de to deploy. And fortunately, we're fighting the guy that has the lower uh, morale first. So hopefully we can get a victory here, which will boost the morale of this unit, making it uh, even easier for us to then counter the higher morale unit. So in any case, we're going to catch that in the next video. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. This is Mel Skinner, signing out.